Hi, I'm David Gilbert, Technology Editor with the International Business Times UK. And I'm here today to give you first impressions of the new 4G network that EE launched this week in the UK. The 4G network promises speeds up to five times faster than the current 3G networks that are operated by EE, O2 and Vodafone in the UK. It has the potential to transform a lot of businesses. It has the potential to increase data use quite significantly in the UK. But what people really want to know is, is it any faster, is it any better than the current 3G networks? Over the past uh, day or so, we've been testing it out, and testing it out indoors, outdoors, in different locations around London, where we're based. Uh, EE launched the network in 11 cities this week, including London, Birmingham, Manchester, Cardiff, and a number of others. What we found, however, is that while sometimes we get blistering fast speeds of up to 20 megabytes per second, which is 10 times what you could expect on a 3G network, a lot of the time, we, were getting, we weren't even getting a 4G signal. It would drop down to the 3G signal that e, all other EE customers are getting as well. Um, and that seems to be the big problem for people so far, is that the 4G network is not there consistently. Now, if you go outside London or outside any of the 11 cities, you're not going to get the 4G signal at all. But even in offices, right in the centre of London, in Canary Wharf where we are, we can't pick up a 4G signal a lot of the time. One of the main problems is that the 1800 megahertz frequency is not ideal for use indoors. A problem called attenuation means that people will not be able to pick up the signal as strongly as they will indoors as they will outdoors. And for a lot of people using their um, 4G enabled smartphone, they want to use it indoors. They don't want to be using it outdoors, especially as the winter comes along. So if we have a look at the phone, we've been speed testing it over the past uh, 24 hours and we've We've taken speed tests in quite a number of different areas, as we said, both indoors and outdoors. We've gotten speeds as low as 1.6 megabytes per second, uh, right up to almost 20 megabits per second. At 20 megabits per second, you are really, really going to notice the difference. Downloading apps, uh, downloading YouTube videos, or playing uh, live streaming TV on BBC iPlayer service, for example, is absolutely transformed on 4G. Uh, you're not waiting for anything, there's no buffering. Downloading apps is almost instantaneous in comparison to 3G. However, because the service is not continual, it's not there all the time, it is very hard to judge whether the system or the service is working for people or not at the moment. It's very hard to recommend it because it, there seems to be issues about having the signal there all the time, which for a lot of people will be a major problem. If, they, if they're paying as much as they're paying for EE, then they're, they're going to be facing a lot of problems. So what we've decided to do is we're going to, we've got a 4G signal here with the Huawei SNP1, and we've got a 3G signal on O2's network with the Samsung Galaxy S3. And what we're going to do is do a couple of tests to show off whether or not the 4G signal is better. Now let's have a look at downloading an app, which is, I believe, 134 megabytes in size. So we'll download us, we'll start the downloads from both. So as you can see, one on the 4G, one on the 3G. And at the moment, the 4G is definitely downloading faster, but at the same time, it's still only 1% downloaded. And it may have taken 10 minutes, but the 3G Samsung Galaxy S3 has just managed to finish in downloading the 134 megabit, megabyte um, app, whereas on 4G, we're still only at 53%, which shows that 4G network does not help at all in this location for downloading apps. And that's the problem. People do not know at the moment if they're going to get a really good 4G signal or not. Another one of the main benefits that EE claims the 4G network will give you is being able to stream uh, HD movies, stream live TV a lot quicker than you would on a 3G network. So what we're going to do is have a look at the YouTube app and we're going to open the latest trailer for The Hobbit and see which um, is able to play quicker and see if there's any necessary difference. Now, immediately you can see the 4G network has launched it a lot quicker and we're well into it and the quality is really, really good and the 3G network still hasn't even started. Okay, it's just started now, but it's, it seems to be a bit jumpy and the quality seems to be a bit different. So there definitely seems to be a benefit there. So if you want to watch a lot of video while you're on the move, we'll say you want to download a movie or a TV program before you get on your commute home to work and you've only got a a cellular connection then 4G is obviously the way to go. Now the problem with that of course is that you might end up using quite a lot more data than you normally would. 
the cheapest um, monthly plan available from EE Forest 4G network is £36 a month. And that only gives you 500 megabits of um, data per month, which is, while EE says their average user uses less than that every month, it is quite a limited amount of data, especially if you want to download movies, if you want to download apps, if you want to upload files, then you're not going to be able to take full advantage of it. Obviously, you can pay more, and it's £41, £46, £51, and £56, and you move up to 1 gig, 3 gigs, 5 gigs, and 8 gigs of data. But again, you're paying, at the top level, you're paying £56 a month, which is a huge amount of money for a mobile phone contract. EE has just launched the 4G network in the UK, and it's going to take some time to really see how fast, or how slow, or how widespread this 4G um, network is. It promises that it will have 16 cities connected by Christmas, 60% of the country by 2013, the end of 2013, and 98% of the country by 2014. By that time, O2 and Vodafone will also have their uh, 4G networks connected. And while it's definitely going to take some time before the vast majority of people connect onto 4G, it is definitely the future. But to make it effective, EE are going to have to make sure that people can connect to 4G when they want to, especially if they're paying a high price for it. I'm David Gilbert, Technology Editor for the International Business Times UK.